Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Florence Ziegfeld musical, Whoopi, starring Eddie Cantor, Eileen Wilson, and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you very much. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae helping to bring you another in our series of music successes. And tonight, we present that famous Ziegfeld extravaganza, Whoopi. <laughs> Yes, we are happy indeed that in bringing you Whoopi, we have with us tonight the star of the original Broadway production. It's America's beloved comedian, Eddie Cantor, portraying his famous role of Henry Williams, the hypochondriac who has made a nervous wreck of himself. Eileen Wilson plays Sally Morgan, and for my part, I appear as Winennis, a young Indian brave who attempted to embrace the white man's culture by attending college in the East. <laughs> Boys, look who's here. It's Juan Ennis, the old Indian kid himself. <laughs> I thought you was back east in college, Juan Ennis. I just got back this morning. Oh, here for a little trouble, eh? Trouble? I thought there was to be a wedding today. There is. Sheriff Bob is marrying your old girlfriend, Sally Morgan. That's the trouble. You're wrong, Pete. I'm not planning to make trouble for oh. Sally. We'll soon see. But here comes the bridegroom, Sheriff Bob. Juan Ennis, what are you doing back in town? I'm back for the wedding, Sheriff. You only came here to embarrass Sally. Her father promised me on his deathbed that Sally be mine. And no Indian or part Indian is going to take her away from me. But just remember, one, Ennis, I ain't taking no trouble from you. Mm. Reckon you've lost your girlfriend, Indian. Well, I know that better than you do, Pete. But I guess I can come to the wedding, can't I? Boy, you sure can. Hey, you're a great sport, Indian. See, me and the boys are going to serenade Sally to sort of wish her luck. I've come a long way to do that myself. I'd like you to know just how I feel. Well, you're right under her window now. <laughs> Go to it. Love me or leave me and let me be lonely. You won't believe me and I love you only. I'd rather be lonely than happy with somebody else. You might find the nighttime the right time for kissing, but nighttime is my time for just reminiscing, regretting instead of forgetting with somebody else. There'll be no one unless that someone is. I intend to be independently blue. I want to love, but I don't want to borrow. To have it today, to give back tomorrow. For my love is your love. There's no love. For anyone else. Love me or leave me and let me be lonely. You won't believe me, but I love you only. I'd rather be lonely than happy with somebody else. You might find the night. 
time, the right time for kissing, but night time is my time for just reminiscing, regretting instead of forgetting with somebody else. There'll be no one unless that someone is you. I intend to be independently blue. Sally doesn't want to see you on Ennis. Looks that way, Pete. But I'll be around. Yoo-hoo! Cowboy! Uh-oh. Here comes Henry Williams' nurse. She's probably lost a little hypochondriac again. Cowboy, I haven't seen Henry in nearly two hours. Help me look for him, will you? Confidentially, nurse, is Henry Williams really as sick as he says he is? No, but he thinks he has every illness that was ever invented. <laughs> the terrible part is he's taken so many pills they can't operate. <laughs> He keeps rolling off the table. <laughs> you know, I can't understand why a nurse bothers with a man who only thinks he's sick. Oh, when a woman falls in love, there's a lot of things about her people can't understand. Oh, I wish I could find Henry. He... Here he comes now. <laughs> Goodness, he must have caught a terrible cold. <laughs> Hello, folks. Oh, Henry Williams, what are you doing with that cow? I just took a little walk with her. With a cow? Henry, as your nurse, I'm supposed to take you for your walk. I know, but I feel much safer with a cow. <laughs> for instance, when a cow snuggles up to you and gives you a little kiss, she isn't looking for a hat or a pair of shoes. And she's got a nice fur coat. She's a contented cow. <laughs> well... Oh, you must be tired from your walk. Uh, sit down here by me. There. Now let me hold your hand. It's not heavy. I can manage. <laughs> Henry, when I hold your hand like this and put my arm around you and snuggle close like this, doesn't it suggest anything to you? Yes, but with my health, I'd better not think about it. <laughs> Most girls go for these big, handsome cowboys, but not me. I like miserable little weak men like you. <laughs> Henry, will you marry me? Mary, put me down. Put me down. You know the condition of my heart. Besides, I'm a half-breed. A half-breed? I breathe through one side of my nose. <laughs> Henry, you can't fool me. You're no thicker than I am. I can read you like a book. You can? Well, don't miss chapter three. <laughs> I got around a lot when I was younger. <laughs> Remind me to tell you sometime. Oh, Mary, Henry. Sally, you're supposed to be getting ready for your wedding. I was, but they told me Juan Ennis was here, and I must see him, if only for a moment. Well, I'll go and see if I can find him. And when I do, I'll tell him he has no business coming back and bothering you on your wedding day. I'll tell him... Remember, he's an Indian. Then I'll tell it to him with the reservations. <laughs> see you later. Sally... Sally, what will the sheriff say I if he knows... I don't care. I've got to find one Ennis before... Sally. Oh, one Ennis. I've been watching you from the other side of the mission. Well, uh, Hen I'd better find Henry before he goes back to that heifer. Oh, this is the first time I've ever had competition from a cow. <laughs> I had to come to wish you good luck, Sally. Oh, Sally, there's still time for you to sneak away with me. We could lose ourselves in the mountains. It can't be, one Ennis. They'd follow us and kill you. But if you care for me... I do, Juan Ennis. You know how proud I am of you, winning all those honors in college, and you just an Indian boy. Just an Indian boy. No matter what I'll do, I'll never be more than that to your race. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish you luck and happiness, Sally. I didn't bring you a gift, but I'll, I'll send you one later. You came yourself, didn't you? All I could get for you was this flower, a red rose. That means more to me than anything, Juan Ennis. 
because it comes from you. I'm bringing a red, red rose, speaking of love to you. I'm telling this red, red rose, bloom all the long year through. No token but this token has ever spoken so true. of love to you. No gift of silver or gold could you bring to me. There is no song that you ever will sing to me. So sweet as a song this rose but has brought I'll keep and caress it so proud to possess you I'm keeping this red, red rose speaking of love and you I'm telling this red red rose bloom all the long years through no token but this Sally, how can you go to this man if you care for me? I do care for you, Juan Ennis. I'm only trying to do what I think best. Please try to understand. I think I do understand very clearly. Goodbye, Sally. Juan Ennis. Oh, Juan Ennis. Sally. Sally, what's the matter? Crying on your wedding day? I'm in trouble, Henry. You're in trouble. Look at me. I've got five dangerous ailments and very little chance of recovering from any of them. The only thing that keeps me alive is the fact that I don't know what to die of. <laughs> oh, if, if I only knew what to do. Sally, you're not married yet. Lots of things can happen between now and the time you say I do. As for me, every time I hear that march from Lohengrin, I am always on the outside looking in. Maybe that is why I see the funny side when I see a fallen brother take a bride. Weddings make a lot of people sad But if you're not the groom, they're not so bad Another bride, another groom Another sunny honeymoon Another season, another reason For making whoopee The choir sings, here comes the bride Another victim is by her side. He lost his reason, cause it's the season for you. 
Down through the countless ages, you'll find it everywhere. Somebody makes good wages, somebody wants her share. She calls him Toodle and rolls her eyes. She makes him strudel and bakes him pie. What is it all for? If so, he'll fall for Make him. Another year, or maybe less. What's this I hear? Well, can't you guess? She feels neglected, and he's suspected of making whoopee. <laughs> she sits alone most every night. He doesn't phone or even write. He says he's busy. But she said, is he? <laughs> he doesn't make much money, $5,000 per. Some judge who thinks he's funny says, you pay six to her. He says, now judge, suppose I fail. The judge says, budge, right into jail. You'd better keep her. You'll find it's cheaper than making whoopee. Henry, will you do something for me? I'll do anything for a bride except be a groom. <laughs> Henry, listen. A lot of terrible outlaws are going to cause trouble. The sheriff wants to protect me. He wants you to drive me over to Martin's Junction to meet him. Well, I can't now. You see, I'm so mixed up, I, I don't know whether to take four of these pills at two o'clock or two of these pills at four o'clock. <laughs> My stomach is confused, too. It's still on daylight saving time. <laughs> Please, Henry. Oh, okay, let's go. Oh, Henry, I knew you'd help me. I even left a note for the others explaining what's happened. Quickly, Henry, there's no time to lose. Let's go. Come on, my car's just around the corner. Follow me, Sally. <laughs> Pete, Jim, come here, quick. Al, what is it, Sheriff? Sally's gone. Sally's gone? Yeah, where's that Indian, Juan Ennis? Well, here he is, Sheriff. I caught him lurking at the edge of the crowd. Take your hands off me. Juan Ennis, if Sally's left me on account of you, I'll kill you. Say, has anybody seen Henry Williams? Don't you bother me with Henry Williams. I'm worried about Sally. Sally? Oh, oh, I just found this note for you, Sheriff. It's in Sally's handwriting. Oh, read it. Look. Dear Bob, I just can't marry you, and don't look for me, because when you read this, I will be far away. I have eloped with Henry Williams. Well, what do you know she... W <gasps> <laughs> with Henry Williams? Man, you know what we do to a critter that steals a horse. Well, this one stole my woman. We're going to ride him down, boys, and then we're going to hang him up. <laughs> like your girlfriend eloped with my boyfriend. I don't understand it. Why, only a while ago, she, she said to me, No token but this token has ever spoken so truly. Today, the railroads are finishing up their part in the task of getting people home from their Christmas and New Year trip. But even while winding up this important job, the railroads are already well along with arrangements for the efficient handling of another big travel movement, the swift, comfortable journey of people from all over the country to Washington to see that great national ceremony, the inauguration of a president of the United States. Going to the capital city to take part in this inauguration or to see it is a traditional American custom. 
And for more than a century now, the railroads have played an increasingly important part in its observance. When Martin Van Buren was inaugurated in 1837, a branch railroad had just been built to Washington. To the nation's capital, this new road brought what the newspapers called a great concourse of respectable strangers from all parts of the Union. At least a thousand people arrived on the train. As population increased and the rail network spread over the country, more and more interest was taken in the great national ceremony. The number of persons going to the inauguration also increased until in modern times the railroads have been called upon to bring into Washington and to take home again more than 100,000 persons in a single day. This year it is anticipated that the attendance at the ceremony will exceed that of any previous inauguration. The celebration will not be limited to the one day of the inauguration itself, but will extend over most of that week. In addition to the official ceremony, the colorful three-hour parade, and the numerous other special features, there will be an opportunity to visit the important national historic shrines in and around the capital city. So once more, the railroads are making ready to carry the throngs who will be going to Washington to see President Truman inaugurated on January 20th and to carry them in any and all weather, dependably, comfortably, safely. Now back to Whoopi, starring Eddie Cantor, Eileen Wilson, and your host, Gordon McRae. What's the matter with it? I don't know. It just stopped. Have you got gas? Have I got gas? <laughs> when my father died, he left me a million dollars. In two years, I spent half of it on bicarbonate. Have I got gas? <laughs> I mean gasoline. Of course I've got gasoline. How do you think we got here? Ketchup? <laughs> I'll get out. I'll probably find the trouble. Uh-huh. I told you I'd find the trouble. What is it? No gasoline. <laughs> oh, Henry, I thought you'd save me. I trusted you. But if you keep me in these mountains all night, Sheriff Bob will probably kill you. What do you mean? I do him a favor and he'll kill me? Henry, I didn't tell you the whole truth. You're not taking me to the sheriff. You're taking me away from him. Oh. <laughs> you just left out the details. <laughs> you mean you're running away from your wedding? Yes. By this time, Bob and all the cowboys will probably be looking for us. This is terrible. Let's start walking back. Take my arm. No, give me your arm. I'm weaker. <laughs> Henry, I still haven't told you the whole truth. More details? Go on, Sally. Go ahead. Go ahead. In that note I left for Bob, I said I'd eloped with you. You did what? Oh, well, not. I'll admit I came west to die, but I don't want to die from Bob Wells. Mm. <laughs> I want to die from my own sicknesses in bed with doctors, nurses, and flowers and a little fruit. <laughs> What, what, what will I do if the sheriff comes? Here, take this. Put down that gun. It kills people. Drop it. Throw it away, I tell you. Put it down, Throw Henry. It. I'll put it here on the seat of the car. That's better. Now, Sally Morgan, we've got to get you out of these mountains before anything happens to your reputation. But you're here to protect me. I know, but even a weak man can have his weaknesses. <laughs> Henry, look. Headlights. Help is coming. Yeah, the road isn't wide enough for him to pass. You'll have to stop and give us some gas. All right, all right, don't block the road, please. Out of the way there. Sorry, I'm out of gas. Oh, don't annoy me with your troubles. I'm a very nervous man. You're nervous. <laughs> don't argue with me. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 17 years. 17 years, he says. I haven't closed my eyes since I've been nine. Talk of insomnia. If I don't drink a glass of hot milk, I can't even put on my pajamas. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. I've had 10 operations in the last five years. Only 10? I've had so many operations, the doctor doesn't sew me up anymore. Look, a zipper. <laughs> And it, it cost me $500. Five? <laughs> My last operation cost $1,500. Really? Let's see. Oh, no wonder. You've got hem stitching. <laughs> now, look, I need five gallons of gas. Oh, no. I'll need every drop I have to get over that mountain ahead. Now, get out of my way. Stop blowing that horn. You're making me nervous. Then get out of my way. You're making me nervous. Stop it. Stop it. You've got me so upset, I don't know what I'm doing. Sally, do something. Here, take this. What do I want with a gun? <laughs> don't, don't, don't shoot. Huh? Oh, see, that's an idea. Pick him up, you. <laughs> now, get out of your car. Drain every drop of your gas tank and put it in mine. Why, why, this is an outrage. Shut up. I'll have the sheriff on your trail in an hour. Don't argue with me. Drain a gas tank quick. 
Don't try any funny business. My partner up there's got you covered. Partner? Yes. Hello? Hello. How are you? All right. See you later. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> This ranch house looks deserted, Henry. I'm afraid there's no one here. Who cares? All I want to see is food. If I don't eat soon, I'll faint. But don't throw water on me, because if I do, I'm liable to catch pneumonia. I always, you know, I'm... Do you suppose I hid the car well enough? Nobody will see it, Henry. Let's go in. The door seems to be unlocked. Why, this is the kitchen. Well, uh, howdy, uh, uh, folks. Um, uh, you must be the new couple I sent out in town to cook and wait the table. No, well, sir, I'm Andy McNabb, the uh, uh, whore foreman of this land. <laughs> He's got something I haven't got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. She's the cook and I'm the waiter. Oh, uh, oh fine, fine. Yes, yes. Uh, you people got here just in time. Here's the owner of the ranch now. Howdy, Mr. Underwood. Andy, get Sheriff Bob Wells on the telephone right away. I was held up last night. Okay, okay, right away, Mr. Underwood. Uh, uh, you two over there, who are you? One side, Sally. Hey, you... Why, the crazy little fool crawled into the stove. Say, who are you people, anyway? Uh, I- I'm the new cook, and he's the waiter. Henry! Oh, oh what happened? The stove exploded. Your face is all covered with soot. Yeah. Well, well, stand up. Let me get a good look at you. Well, this is the first time we've ever had colored help at the ranch. Huh? Oh, yes, sir, boss, yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, you like my work, sure enough, you are. Yeah, 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 sir. Well, I, I didn't have to uh, phone the sheriff, boss. He's riding up out uh, the front right now, you sir. The sheriff, one side, Sally. Well, the sheriff, I'd better go out and meet him. Sally. One minute. I knew I'd find you if I followed the sheriff. But I ran away from the sheriff. I didn't marry him. Where is the man you did marry? But I didn't marry Henry. That was just a trick to protect you. Don't you believe me? There'll be no one unless that someone is you. I intend to be independently blue. I want your love, but I don't want to borrow. Have it today and to give back tomorrow For my love is your love There's no love for anyone else Sally, do you love me enough to live my way and be one of my people? One then, as you couldn't expect that of me even you couldn't be happy like that. After all you've studied and learned. Well, if you ever change your mind, Sally, I'll be waiting. Goodbye. One minute. See, Sally, if you had run away with one instead of me, I wouldn't be in all this trouble. You're in love with one Oh, Henry, I'm so miserable. I wish I were dead. Don't say that. I wish I'd never been born. You could have said that first and saved yourself a wish. <laughs> Now, let's try to get out of here before the sheriff sees us. I hope we can. If we're arrested for what we did last night, you'll be sent to jail for 20 years. Oh, oh that'll be a good joke on them. I can't live for six months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here comes the mob. Oh. Uh, Sally. Yes, Bob? Where's that fellow you ran off with? I'm going to kill him. Bob, please. Jilting me for a pill chewing tenderfoot. But he just gave me a lift. Then we, we were captured by bandits. Bandits? The same ones that held up Mr. Underwood. Oh, I think I found a clue. There's an old car hidden down behind the table. An old Model T coupe with green wire wheels. Why, that's the kind of car the bandits were using. They must be here on the ranch. That's right, that's right. All right, boys, search the ranch and don't let a white man get by you. Now, I want to question every man on the place. Well, who's this fella? Why, uh, he's my new waiter. Uh, come here, you. What do you do? I was a singing waiter, sir. A singing waiter? Well, maybe you are and maybe you're not. Go ahead. Let's hear you sing. Now. Yes, sir, but please take that gun away from there. I can't stand anything heavy on my stomach. I can't, really. I'll sing. Way down on the levee in old Alabama, 
There's Daddy and Mammy, there's Ephraim and Sammy On a moonlight night you can find them all While they are waiting, the banjos are syncopating What's that they're saying? What's that they're saying? While they keep playing, a humming and swaying It's the good ship, the Robert E. Lee That's come to carry the cotton away Watch them shuffling along See them shuffling along Go take your best gal, your real pal Go down to the levee, I said to the levee Join that shuffling throng Hear that music and song It's simply great, mate Waiting on the levee Waiting for the Robert E. Lee Arrest that man. Me, sir, I didn't think my singing was that bad. Uh, he's a white man. While he was dancing around singing, I saw his wrists. Pull off those gloves and see for yourself. Come here, you. Please, my nerves. There. So you are white. I can explain everything, Sheriff. Henry Williams, I ought to string you to the highest tree. I warn you, you're getting me all upset. Here, Henry, take it. Huh? Put down that gun, Williams. Don't worry, I never shot one of these things in my life. <laughs> hey! hey. Sally, look. Look, they all ran off. I frightened them. Me, Henry Williams. <gasps> Sally, you're crying. I was thinking about one in it. I wanted love, but I don't want to borrow. To have it today and to give back tomorrow. For my love is his love. There's no love for anyone. Don't worry, Sally. We'll find one in it. The day will come when at your wedding you'll hear me hum another season, another reason for making whoopee. Before returning to the next act of tonight's Railroad Musical Show, let's go back to that important pilgrimage which Americans make every four years to Washington at inauguration time. People from all over the country will be doing that along about January 20th, not only to see the impressive ceremony of inaugurating the president, but also to see the colorful parade and to take in the sights and see the shrines of the capital city as well. A lot of these people will be traveling to Washington by train, Special parties are being made up in many cities, and special cars, or in many cases, special trains are being arranged. There will be enough Pullman cars of the berth or section type for those who wish sleeping car accommodations on their journeys to Washington. In many cases, parties traveling by Pullman will also stay in the cars while there, using them, in effect, as temporary hotels. If you want to know any of the details about travel arrangements or special parties from your town, just consult your local railroad ticket agent. He will have the information or he can get it for you. And if you are going to Washington for the inauguration, the railroads invite you to ride with them and ride dependably, comfortably, safely. <laughs> The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. And now we return to Whoopi, starring Eddie Cantor, Eileen Wilson, and your host, Gordon McRae. One Ennis, you make Mountain God happy today. You come back to own people. For all time, be Indian now. For all time. But you do wrong. Bring white friend here. Mountain God grow angry if we keep white girl here. Henry and Sally needed help, Black Eagle. 
Our reservation was the only place they could hide. You must not feel badly because I love this girl. What thing does love make all people sad? Oh, love is not sad, Black Eagle. It is like the trail going up the mountainside. My love is the mountain itself, and whether it be to happiness or to sorrow, when love calls, we must climb to meet it. For love is the mountain god. Blue. White man, Henry Williams, come here. You want to see me, Chief? Ugh. A little bicarbonate will do wonders for you. <laughs> white man love white girl? Sally, me? Of course not. One Ennis loves her, and she loves one Ennis, and I'll do all I can to help you, one Ennis. Well, thank you, Henry. Uh, Black Eagle like you, white man. Thanks, Black Eagle. By the way, I've always wondered, perhaps you can tell me, was there really anything between Pocahontas and John Smith? <laughs> Black Eagle think Pocahontas and John Smith marry. He good husband, never leave her side. Mm hmm No wonder there are so many Smiths in this country. <laughs> oh, 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 there's trouble. What is it? Look, coming up the path, it's the sheriff and the whole gang from the ranch. All right, William, sit right where you are. Juan Ennis, have you kidnapped Sally? I came here of my own free will, Bob, with Henry. Why, you little worm. Oh, oh here comes the early bird. <laughs> Remember, my heart, don't fight with me, Miss Custer. The only way you can get me to stop fighting with you is to change my name from Miss Custer to Mrs. Williams. Mm -hmm. Since when has that stopped fighting? <laughs> now, you two can settle that later if Williams ever gets out of jail. I'm arresting him as leader of a desperate gang of robbers. I'm not a gang leader. Of course he is. Oh, don't argue with him, Sheriff. Get a confession. Yeah, I'll get a confession, all right, Underwood, with a little psychology. All right, Williams, answer my questions. Yes, sir. Where's the rest of your gang? I haven't got a gang. What's your name? Henry Williams. Where were you born? New York. How tall are you? Five feet ten. How tall are you? Six foot one. Where were you born? Albuquerque. What's your name? Bob Wells. Where's the rest of your gang? I haven't got a gang. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. A little psychology, huh? This is all absurd, Bob Wells. Henry Williams is not the leader of a gang of highwaymen. Well, if you say so, Sally, it, it's possible I was mistaken. Now will you come back with me? Sally! No. No, wait. One in it, love white girl, so... Black Eagle tell truth. Long time, 25 years ago, Black Eagle find child in white man's shack on mountainside. White man leave white squaw. White squaw die. Black Eagle take child. Black Eagle raise child. Black Eagle love one in us. Is this true? Or are you just saying it to make me happy? Indian never lie. One in us, white man. Sally. One in us. I love you, Sally. And I love you, one in us, with all my heart. You're mine now, forever. Forever and always. Isn't it sickening? Where's my milk of magnesia? <laughs> I threw it away. You, you, you what? And your pill, too. You never were sick, Henry. You were just a terrible hypochondriac. No. He's a hypochondriac? <laughs> Why, I've been suffering with it for 50 years. Uh, Williams, did you ever imagine you were going insane? Imagine it. I've gone 
I've decided to let Miss Custer become Mrs. Williams. <laughs> oh, Henry, we'll be married. Yes. Oh, I've always wanted to have a son. <laughs> She doesn't know me very well, does she? <laughs> another bride, another groom, and there's no room for any gloom. It's really sickly that they so quickly will make whoopee. No more powder, no more pills. Goodbye to Dr. and Dr. Bill. I won't be dizzy. I'll be too busy. No token but this token as a Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to Eddie Cantor and Eileen Wilson for guesting with us tonight, and also to our splendid supporting cast, Elvia Allman, Lou Merrill, Jeff Chandler, Joe Kearns, and Jess Kirkpatrick. Whoopie was book by William Anthony McGuire, lyrics by Gus Kahn, and music by Walter Donaldson, was adapted for radio by Bill Demling. Now, next week, the show train will arrive on the same tracks at the same time. On board will be the famous MGM star, Gene Kelly and Lucille Norman to join me in bringing you Victor Herbert's operetta, The Red Mill. Well, it looks as though ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. <laughs> has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Eddie Cantor appeared on this program through the courtesy of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. There goes our show train, but don't forget it'll be back next week with the Red Mill. And here's Carmen Dragon and...